Good afternoon. Uh, we're here with Michael McCraddick. Thanks for thanks for letting us uh, come in and talk to you. Thank you. Pleasure. Now we've talked to you a couple times when uh, mm -hmm. bad things have happened in the county. Um, so now we're faced with you know probably 300 families at least that have had you know some pretty catastrophic loss this week. Um, give us some pointers. What? How do we deal with that kind of stuff? Well, some of, some of the, the basics for almost sure. anything is yeah. really just kind of, at, at first, is to take care of yourself. And so some of the basics, you want to make sure that, you know, your sleep is on track, Got it. You're, you know, you're eating right, sure. that you're still kind of getting some exercise, that your schedule is kind of staying as much as possible, kind of the same, you know, some of that normalcy that we take have. Take care of you physically first yeah. type of thing. Yeah, definitely. Because okay. like, with any of those, get, kind of get off track, you know, yeah. as far as sleep. If you're not sleeping... Yeah. You know, it's just, you don't have the inner resources to deal with things, and then things just get bad. Yeah. And so sleep is one of those things, and there are lots of things to do with that. But, you know, and it's hard because, especially for a lot of people at this point, because of all the craziness that's happened over the last week. Yes. A lot of, a lot of anxiety, yep. a lot of stress, and people yep. are having trouble sleeping, you know, because of all the things. They're just worried. They've been keyed up for a long time watching to see if something bad is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of hard. But getting those things back on track is kind of... The, one of the first things is just making sure everything for you, you know, and right. giving yourself a big break. Right. You know, it's a huge thing because you've experienced something that's outside the normal of what, what everybody goes through. And so yeah. you have to give yourself a break in that process and kind of just take it easy and rest, you know. Of course, make yourself, you know, make sure that you're, you know, again, eating right too. Sure. You know, plenty of fluids, yeah. you know, yeah. those types of things. Kind of the basics, you know, survival. But just make sure those are in place to kind of lay that foundation. For other things. Which makes sense because if those aren't there, then everything's going to go off the, yeah. off the rails in other areas. Yeah. Huh? yeah, definitely. And then making sure that you're talking to lots of people about it. You know, and then talking to other people. You know, for, for the, there's a lot of people. Talk to people, people in person and not just on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook is good, but you get a limited response time, you know, type thing. But definitely calling people and asking, you know, so what was your experience? Right. How are you doing? You right. know, oh, what's been going on? You know, anything that you're still kind of experiencing or anything that you need. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of connecting people in the community, talking to people about kind of what's going on. There's some positives, too, because an interesting thing is I've, I heard from more family members this week than I have in <laughs> 10 mm -hmm. years. You know, because mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. everybody called and touched bases and, you know, wanted to, that kind of thing. So, um, definitely. Yeah. But that's what you want to do is make yeah. sure that you're, you know, you're contacting people also, you know, in your community and people mm -hmm. like that and stuff like that. And if you're a family member or a friend or things like that, connect with other people and talk about it and share your experiences. Yeah. That's one of the things that's really helpful when yeah. you're dealing with upsetting events or traumas is that you, you talk about it, you share it with those. You don't keep them buried up inside so they kind of log in and get stuck. Okay. Yeah. Um, any tips for people who, you know, for... For most of us, it was just anxiety and the uncertainty of it. But there's, you know, for the people who actually want, you know, lost mm -hmm. their entire home or things like that, what are some of the phases that are normal for them? I mean, I know just the, you know, how, what, are the, what do they do? Well, for, for most people, like with grief, you yeah. know, there's going to be a stage of where, you know, you're just on kind of survival mode. And so you just have to do things. You have to take care of things. Mm -hmm. and sometimes you're even amped up. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're making phone calls, you're filling out forms, you're filling sure. out paperwork, all these different things and stuff. And that, and that's a good part of the process. It actually is kind of helpful. But after that, then, you know, after that, then there may be some more things that kind of happen and where you start right. to get kind of angry right. about things that have happened. And you know, it's like, why me? Mm -hmm. You know, and then how come, you know, Aunt Sally's not calling me? You know, how right. come, you know, this person is right. touching bases or, you know, I, and I know I called and left a message or things like that or what about this friend they're not talking to me or those types of mm -hmm. things so that the anger starts to come up in that right. process right you know and so there there is kind of a process and you just allow it to kind of un un unveil you know and, and try to again stay with the basics but then also again talking to people about kind of what's going on for you making sure that people you know understand where you're at in this process because a lot of times it does hit home you know in, in our home, you know, becomes part of our identity. Yes. You know, and yes. so who we are is kind of wrapped up in that. And that's not yes. really us, right? but it feels like it. Oh, sure. And yeah. so, we, you know, somehow we are no longer, you know, valuable 
or lovable or special or whatever because we've lost this, this mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. this home. How, on in tragedies like this, how do they rank hierarchical? I mean, is is it similar to a death or is it? I mean, at the, I mean, how? Where would you rate? Where would you rate something? Well, especially a loss of a home, it would be way up there because it's something you experienced. And, and a lot of times, especially because of the fire, you know, one of the things that really, you know, because that, that's one of the things I talk to people about mm -hmm. trauma is that at times you'll have an upsetting event and it will overload the neurological, physiological system and the information gets stored dysfunctionally, gets log jammed inside. And so that's why we can all go back, you know, like, five hours, five days, five months, five years, 50 years, and feel something that happened way back when is that. Yes. And, and part of that is because of per, how personal it is to you. Is it happening to you, you know, type thing. And then also the intensity. Right. And so you know with the loss of a home, you've got both of those mm -hmm. in place. That it was really personal and it was really intense. Yeah. And so there's a good possibility it could have overloaded the system. You know, and that and that means you're kind of stuck with some of this. You feel it for a while. Yeah. You know. You know, one of the things is we've been thinking about um, on the news side since the outcome started becoming certain. You know, and since mm -hmm. you know, it, it is how do we? How does the community as a whole? Because there's a lot of communities. In fact, I talked with somebody just before we uh, came in that have an event like this go through the communities, and those communities don't recover. Some do, some don't. Um, but one of the things I think is, how can I mean? It would be nice to have to look back for all of us. Look back in a year and say, okay, that was how you make a community whole again. You know, that is the right way to do it. And I think, hopefully, some of the things in our in our small towns and small communities, there is. I mean, we still there are connections. You know, people. You know mm -hmm. the people. I mean, mm -hmm. there's not a you know, the disconnect of, of a large metropolitan area where you have the anonymity of crowds. Um, here, it's like, you know the person who lost his home. You know, um, and I guess for those of us who, how, how do we help other people? I mean, how do we how do we do this in the right way to where looking back it was, um, you know, we, in some ways, maybe we could get a better outcome. You know, maybe we have new houses, new, you know, is there, I mean, what's some of the things you would say on that? Yeah. Well, I think part of it is, again, kind of similar to the talk before, is that is that connection piece. I think it's okay. very, very important, is that people maintain the connection by, you know, reaching out to other people, kind of like you did. When I re you reached your hand out to me, yes. I reached back. Yeah. You know, yeah. that you reach out, I reach back, that that process happens on a regular basis. And then if you're seeing people that are not, you know, part of that process, you start reaching out to them, yeah. that there's a, a place where people can, uh, you know, find a sense of community, a sense of connection with others, wherever that is, whether it be yeah. part of a, a small yeah. group or a, you know, some kind of com community debriefing or mm -hmm. whatever, where people can kind of share their stories and talk about those things or wherever it is. It's got, you know, it's one of the values of like, you know, the AA community is that you've got a place to go and share your stories with people that are like-minded that you, you can connect with. Do you think it may be valid? Because I know they're having a, an, um, the second wave of community meetings the first of this next week, one in Amador and one in Calaveras County. Um, I know those are going to be focused on fire recovery and immediate needs and things like that. Do you think it would be wise to have a community meeting in 60 days or something like that just to kind of have, have a forum to be able to address things like that or at least have some shared you know, this is how it's going with my insurance company, or you know, just ventilate. I mean, do you think that would have value? Yes, I think it would. Okay. Right. And, All right. Know, being able to kind of share their stories. Some of it's just emotionally kind of venting right. and sharing some of kind of right. what goes on, and then also kind of talking about you know what are some of your frustrations with this, and you know this is the way I navigated this, or mm -hmm. I did this, or mm -hmm. you know, are there ways that we can band together and kind of say, hey, let's let's move this ball a little further. Yeah. You know, type yeah. doing those kind of things. So, yeah. It, yeah, definitely. You know, it's a great place to be. Is that connection, and then the power of that yeah. in process, and then you know, accepting that you know we're we're all you know a mess, bumbling, stumbling, walking yeah. into walls, and yeah. and hopefully that's part of that process of being able to say, okay, we've got we've got messes, and yeah, I'm a pain sometimes, and you're a pain, but we we love and accept each other in that process because right. we're family, we're community. Yeah, those things that go on. And there's been some amazing stories, you mm -hmm. know, the, the, 
4-H and the FFA, you know, groups that let spearheaded rescuing all the large animals and took mm -hmm. care. I mean, there's some just wonderful stories about yeah. this. I mean, there's just um, Definitely. that I think that, you know, is a basis to help, you know. Um, all right. Well, any others, yeah. any other things you would say to people or what, 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 how, how should we, why do you want to close it off? How do you, <laughs> what do you, well, mostly I would say, you know, keep the connection piece going. Don't, okay. Don't, don't isolate from other people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that could be a tendency to happen in this kind of stuff. Yes. But definitely don't isolate. And then also don't, you know, go around attacking other people and being really frustrated and angry about things. It is a process. Things will work out and stuff. And so hopefully as a community we come together and, and uh, stay connected. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.